Okay, if you go to assignments, in assignment four, we finished our refined sketches and we were learning how to make our black shape logo. So I'm going to go to where we post our final logos here. If there is anything missing from your proving ground, which was the step before in the unit, remember you had two requirements to meet this for this proving ground. You had to post your three sketches. It can be more than three sketches, but you need to show a minimum of these three approaches, the central symmetrical approach, the dynamic approach, and the positive negative approach. And then the second is that you have to leave a comment on a fellow student's work. And that comment needs to express a preference for one of their designs. So that they get external input as well as just their own taste and feeling. Okay, so we've done that, or I've demoed that. And then I cleaned up my design just in Photoshop, thinking about it as cut out of black paper. And this was the one that the class kind of responded to. I kind of like the one that has the, uh, the white head as well. So I might work up both options. So that still has this kind of white head, just because that's a little ghostlier. So I might work up both options. So what did I do? I took my refined sketch and I opened it in Illustrator. And you can just do that by right clicking and saying open with Illustrator. And then that's my sketch. You can see that it's a raster file. It's clearly pixelated. Then what I did is I double clicked on the layer to get this image, which are the layer options different than layer styles in Photoshop though that's how you get to layer styles in Photoshop and I'm going to click on dim images and this is called onion skinning and then I took it to 20 percent the default is 50. and now I'm going to actually lock that layer layers in Illustrator are almost entirely organizational you use them as you need them. You lock them as you need them. So I'm going to lock it by clicking next to the eyeball that turns it on and off. So I can't mess with that sketch. Now I'm going to show you how I can bring in the other sketch. Because I want to try that approach as well. So I'm going to drag and drop that raster file of my other sketch in. And there it is, it took a little while. And now I can do the same thing. I can double click on it, see how it comes in and it looks just like a smart object. You know why? Because it's a smart object. It's referencing out to that external file to output these pixels. Double click on it, I can dim those images. I'm just gonna dim it to 50%. Oh, maybe a little bit more. interesting because it should show me what's underneath it so if that's not working I might have to hit return nope that doesn't do it so it dimmed my image but it doesn't show the vector underneath it so instead I'm gonna go to window within Illustrator and go to transparency this is like opacity on layers within Photoshop and then I'm actually gonna use opacity but I have to select it first. <laughs> and now it will show me my sketch over the top of my refined sketch. Okay, because I want to create an option that has an empty head as well. So I'm going to lock that. And I can turn off one or the other anytime I want. All right. Now I'm ready to create a new layer. Again, it's just organizational. And this layer is going to be for my vector tools. I showed you the pen tool a lot last class. The pen tool is the one that gives you complete control over everything. And just to remind you, when you use the pen tool, you're able to plot your anchors and create either straights between your anchor points or curves between your anchor points. But you want to make sure that your properties are set in a way that you like. So right now, the default is a white shape fill and a black stroke border. I'm going to swap those 
So it's a black fill and a white border. And then I'm going to click on the white border and then click on this red line that basically says no stroke, no border around it. I just want black shapes. And then if I want to create something like this crown, I just click, drag, click. Actually, don't drag. Click and move. Click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move. And it's going to connect all these points, these anchors, with a straight vector line. And then when I want to curve, like here, I click and drag. And that will convert the straight into a curve. But the problem is, if I then move from there, it's automatically going to be a curve, unless I go back and I click my anchor point first. And then it will go back to being straight. And then I have to close my path. That's just good vector hygiene. And it has something to do with the stroke, because if you turn on a stroke on to something that's not a closed path, the stroke does really crazy things. Even though I'm not using strokes, it's nice to have the option. So I want to make sure I close the path, even though the fill will kind of make it look like it's closed for you. Right. Then I can use my small selection tool, which is the white arrow at the top, to click off of it, to click on it, to see each anchor point. And if I need to, I can hover over those anchor points, click them, and move them. That can only be done with the small selection tool. And then, of course, Command-Z works. You can always undo what you've done. If I use the large selection tool, which is the black arrow at the top, I can click it, but it won't show me the anchor points. Instead, it will select the entire path. And once the entire path is selected, it gives me what looks like a transform box, and that allows me to do transforms. And it also allows me to do things like Command-C to copy it, Command-V to paste it. And in this way, if I wanted to, I think I, I demonstrated this, I could use this crown shape if I wanted a really clean angular logo with only a couple curves. I could use this to make the wing because ve vectors are infinitely scalable. And if I wanted to lock its proportions instead of letting it distort, I'd have to hold down Shift, which is the opposite of Photoshop. Photoshop, you hold down Shift in order to distort. They changed that a few years ago. I'm still getting used to it. All right. So now, these are hard edge shapes. If I want to use the pen tool to create something that's mostly curves, you see how many curves are in that body of the bird? Every time I make a new path, it creates a new layer, just like when you use ve vector shapes within Photoshop. So if I just use the pen tool, and this time I click and drag, instead of just clicking and moving, I'm going to get curves. And the, few, the fewer anchor points I can do this with, the cleaner the design will be. So that's a curve. I don't want a curve there. I want a straight. And then if I want to curve it, I click and drag. Then I don't want that curve there. I want a straight. So then to curve it, I click and drag. So it's best to just have a curve on w one side of each vector point. So one handle per point for curves. And once it gets to where I can't see it anymore, I just have to wing it. Ha, ha, ha. And then I can always adjust it later. I could also take the, the transparency down on the, the vector. I could just go to transparency and then turn it down so I could see my shapes a little bit better. But remember, all of these can be edited after the fact. All these anchor points. Okay, I don't want a curve going in the direction. So instead I click and drag. That was a little too much of a drag. Command Z. <laughs> click and drag. You can use Command minus to zoom out, Command plus to zoom in, space bar to move around. So you can get to where you need to with your handles. But I, I keep on undoing the second handle of these curves. which has served me well. 
but here is where I need a little curve, and that can be tricky. So you get used to understanding where you actually need extra curves. And here the curve's actually going the right way, but I'm still going to click here and create it, because I like to have one handle per anchor point for curves. And then there are no handles when you have straights. Ah, there we go. So even though that looks like it's going right, I'm going to click here and then make my curve at the other end where I close the path. Oops. All right, now I can use my small selection tool and click any of these. And if I need to create an extra curve, like I do, because I actually need a curve to go out from both sides of this one point, I'll find that under my pin tool. It's the anchor point tool, which used to be called the convert anchor point tool. And now I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to drag out. So I get handles on both sides. And then I get to use my small selection tool, my direct selection tool, click on it, and if I hold down shift, it will lock them. If I hold down, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and what I want to do is play with just this handle independent of the other handle. So if you want to play with both of them to kind of even it out, you hold down shift. But you don't. if you don't hold down shift and you're using the small selection tool, you can control each handle independently. So this is the other handle. I think that's about what I want. Now I can take, I have to select it all, take its opacity back to 100%. All right, so now I've got this shape. So let's say that's my logo, but it's missing something, right? It's missing the, the eye. So what did I do? I created this kind of like we did with vector shapes for our emoji. And you could also create your logo out of vector shapes. The shapes are right underneath the pin tool options. So I could do circles, I could do rectangles. Remember, we're just doing them in black for now. I can do polygons, which then I would set with the properties to have a certain number of sides. Where are my polygon properties? Because a polygon with three is a triangle. Those are helpful. Should be able to set that somewhere. And I could layer all those up. And how do I make it into a triangle? Well, I simply use the small selection tool and, or actually use the pen tool. And I don't even need to use the delete anchor point tool if I just hover over the anchor points and it's easiest once they're visible, it will delete them for me. So the pin tool has certain shortcuts. All right, and then the problem is these are all separate shapes. This is a problem in, a, in Photoshop with vector shapes. How can you merge them all? So to merge them all, here we have three different shapes. You can select them. I'm going to use the small selection tool and just click in the middle of them. Hold down shift and it will select multiples. All right. So if we see this in layers, you can see that all three of those are lit up. Now we're going to use this tool, which I want all of you to know in Illustrator because it's incredibly important. It's under window and it's called Pathfinder. It's so important that if it's free floating, I want you to lock it into a sidebar here. So it's always showing. Pathfinder allows you to merge paths together. Makes